and action. Fran had a question about whether soy is healthy for you or not. And it is very confusing, so I thought I'd talk about this. But uh, as I was going to get my uh, smoothie, my turmeric smoothie with hemp protein in it at Mariano's, I went down the aisles and there were only two aisles that I did not find a soy product. I mean, there was even soy in this power bar. If you read the ingredients, I don't know if I can bring it up here, read the active ingredients, you'll usually find soy somewhere along the active ingredients box or label. Now, I went through every aisle and I found one product except for aisle 13 and aisle 16. Aisle 13, it was nothing but kitchen utensils, no food. Aisle 16 was uh, soda and pop and all that other stuff, energy drinks. And I couldn't find any uh, soy uh, ingredients there, but obviously that whole aisle was full of high fructose corn syrup. So even the aisle with the cat food had soy in the product. So you really got to read your labels. Forget the big exposure about whether you want uh, to eat a soy bean or a soy product or not. You're getting soy indirectly and you should read your labels. So having said that, uh, you know, the, there are positives. We know that the, anybody can cherry pick a study and say, oh, it caused, this study caused cancer in 12 people. This study caused recurrence in uh, cancer survivors. But if you look at if you step back, when all that stuff is confusing, step back and look at populations. Asia has a lower chance of breast cancer than America. And one of the theories was that Asian women have a soy exposure from when they're kids up until when they're adults. So I think we have, we have a correlation. Could it be a direct correlation? I think it is. In fact, the theory is that when the Asian women, with the chronic exposure to soy in their whole food, mostly plant-based diet, move over to a standard American diet, their breast cancer rates increase. So that's one bit of evidence that supports having soy from when you're a kid. But that, that's not just soy isolates. What I pointed out in the boxes of food, those are all isolates. That's not healthy. When you take a plant that's healthy and you try to scientifically take the active ingredient out, you can cause a problem because that's not the way it's supposed to happen in nature. So I do not agree when you have uh, foods with soy isolates in them. I like whole foods like tofu, edamame, tempeh. I like tofu, I love tofu, but it has to be organic, it has to be non-GMO. Tempeh, I don't really like. I tried cooking with it once. Edamame, I love edamame. Again, if it's non-GMO and organic, because that is a problem if you try to add soy into your nutrition practice for a month, per se, and it's, you're not checking for GMO uh, status, you could be getting the stuff that's planted and grown by Monsanto. And the Roundup Ready soybean or soy in the U.S., I, I mean, that's been, number one, it has a gene in it that I don't know where it comes from. Number two... Uh, it's been sprayed with pesticide, hopefully rinsed off and cleaned, but how is it cleaned? It's probably cleaned with another detergent. So I, I would stay away from that and I would look for organic and non-GMO on the label. So, and uh, not an isolate, but a pure soy molecule or pu pure soy source. This is Tofurky. This is my favorite introduction and soy product, but has, I don't know if you can breathe this, but if you see the ingredient label here it says organic soy. So I, I, this is, I think this is approved. I'm giving this a thumbs up because I always have this. The Italian sausage flavor of this thing is, is really good. Uh, but, so obviously I have soy. And the concepts, again, if you look in cherry pick, you'll be confused because there's some small studies that say it's helpful and protective against breast cancer. There's some small studies that say it's, it causes breast cancer. But again, step back and look at the populations. You'll see who thrives more. But if you're going to give it a try, you really have to uh, notice what, number one, you should learn how to cook with it because it's a texture. Tofu, if you cook with it, it's different. I think it works well with Asian foods because it, it, you need, it's very bland, but you need a lot of flavor versus just having a tofu. I mean, I tried eating tofu just bland, which is essentially non-fermented soy, uh, really bland and chewy. Tempeh is a little more earthy, but a little 
different. That's fermented. But without getting into the details of that, um, the theory, I think, that says it's probably protective, and this is why I'm giving it a thumbs up, is soy has phytoestrogens in it. Again, non-GMO, organic. And phytoestrogens, if you have a breast cancer that has a receptor on it, the breast cancer, or the breast tissue with receptors on it, if you have a phytoestrogen circling around the bloodstream because you just add a soy product, it should link with the receptor. And my, my thinking is that it blocks the receptor. And versus having that receptor open and then taking in those things that are called endocrine disruptors, those estrogen-like things, food products, uh, foams, cosmetics, that can also connect with your receptor and stimulate. So if you have a whole bunch of crap that you are getting exposed to that potentially can cause breast cancer, and then you have a potential blocker that will close the receptor up, then you can't get, if it's blocked with the phytoestrogens from a soy product, then theoretically the external exogenous bad guys can't, you know, re, can't re, join the receptor and can't stimulate breast cancer. So I think there's enough information that says it's at least reassuring that you can probably take advantage of soy. The, the question would be if an adult introduces soy, whether they'll have the same benefits as somebody in Asia who's been having soy since they were children. I, I don't know. But I think it's, uh, for all its benefits, it's, it's good because you can use it as a substitute for red meat. And, and we are definitely, in the U.S., eating too much red meat. Cholesterol problems are abound. And I think that if you can get away from, uh, if you have a substitute, like soy, number one, it's got good protein. Number two, it's great for fiber. Um, so those two things, in addition to healthy fats, I think those are the three things that you can get from a soy product. Again, as long as it's organic and non-GMO. So if you want to try it as part of your diet, I think it's reasonable. It gives you variety. Uh, you'll have to learn how to cook with it. Because if you go to restaurants and have it prepared for you, you're not going to know whether it's non-GMO and organic or not. So. Try to work with it as best as you can, um, experiment with different dishes, or ask your restaurants and the servers if they do get organic and non-GMO. But I think it's worth it, Fran, to give it a try. Uh, I, I'm not that scared by it, but as I told you, I, I love my form of it. And when I go eat uh, in Chinese restaurants, I sometimes order um, Kung Pao with tofu. But I have to ask, and they, they probably don't like me, but I have to ask the uh, server about whether it's genetically modified or not. And they usually say no, but I, I don't know. I trust them. So I would say thumbs up, but just know what you're getting into. Understand the dynamics. And again, step back because it's confusing. Step back and just look at the populations. And, and by all means, you should be doing, uh, staying away from exogenous stuff, eating a mostly whole food plant-based diet if you can, and uh, incorporating a little soy. And just in case you're not sure about soy isolates, that's essentially all those things that have those ingredients, those extra ingredients, those are isolates, whether they're under the name soy or they have a pseudonym where you, can't, you don't have the word soy, it's just another word. You have to read your labels. It can be in the milk. You know what's really spooky? Uh, the most, uh, uh, in the label reading I went through, through Mariano's, the most of the soy, the most soy that I found was in the children formula. Enfamil, Similac, they all had a soy ingredient that was an isolate. And that, that can't be healthy. So just buyer beware and understand where you're going with this and hopefully you'll be able to make good decisions and have a nice experience with the taste of soy.